This is a ship by them. It doesn't hit through the vessel's void. This story is about the town I love and a boy who lives here. His name is Joel. He wishes he lived somewhere else. Not here. Not in Sundstrom. Sundstrom is far off in the far north. A thousand miles from the sea. All around us is forest. A million trees. Trees as far as the eye can see. See the house by the river? That's Samuel. Off to work at 5 a.m. He's a lumberjack who works for the Sunstrom Timber Company. That's where most men here work. He tiptoes out of the house so as not to wake his son. It's winter now and it's light from 10 in the morning until 3 in the afternoon. That's all the light you get in Sunstrom. There's Joel, Samuel's son. He's done the shopping and now he's boiling the potatoes for their supper. His mother had enough of Sunstrom. She left her family and went south. Where? No one knows. Joel can't remember her face. He's his own mother now. He brings himself up. Winter is like a long, long night. Everything is frozen. Every lake, river, our town becomes a town of ice. Mrs. Westman lives in the flat below us. She's talking to Jesus, the only man left in her life. She doesn't approve of me. And then spring comes, and it rains for weeks. Spring hoses winter out. That's Gertrude, selling religious magazines for the Pentecostal church. They call her no-nos. Well, it's true. She had a tumour and they cut off her nose. Summer? It's never dark. It's light all night and day. Extreme is not extreme in Sunstrom. It's normal. Some say it drives you mad living here. <laughs> but that's not true. Sarah's cleaning up the empties. Most of the timber company drink her lot on Friday nights. Sarah's had a fill of hard luck sisters. She has her own tale to tell. There's no one to listen. We get a bit isolated sometimes. That's all. We get set in our ways. In the dead of winter, even DC people freeze over. Miss Needstrom is setting up for her geography class. She teaches me and Joel. She's all right when she's in a good mood. That's very good, Otto. That's exactly how I walk. My name is Simon Winstall. Why is it me who's asked to tell you about the good people of Sundstrom? Because I never sleep. I've given it up. So I get into my lorry and I drive around. I see everything. I see things no one else sees. Hold this. You're looking at my feet, are you? People can never decide what's best. I can slide forward using my Wellington, or dig into the ice using my spiked boot to keep me steady. Who says you have to wear identical boots on both feet? Did the police have the right to arrest people who wear odd boots? Of course not. No two feet are the same. 
Hang on to this rope now. What are you doing? Doing? I'm laying out this rope in the snow. I think it looks good. I only do things that look good. Do you think it looks good? Of course. It looks really good. I was ill for a long time. It was only when I started to do things that look good that I started to be healthy again. No normal person lays out ropes in the snow and thinks it looks good. The earth is round. It spins round and round. Sometimes I get dizzy and I have to lie down. The snow cools my head down. This gives me a chance to think about the past and the future. And while all that's going on, I'm alive. And when I'm dead, I won't be alive any longer. That's the top and bottom of it, really. Thank you for your help. You can go now. I want to be left in peace. But come back some other time and I'll give you some soup that will let you see into the future. That's not possible. Oh yes, it is. Come back to see me and I'll show you. I can see Joel on his rock by the river, and no one else ever sits upon it, so it's his. I don't know my son very well. I'm always working, and I get so tired, I'm always sleeping. What makes Joel happy are my sea stories. I'm a sailor that got marooned in a forest. It happened because I came here to live with Jenny. I left the sea for Jenny. Then Jenny left me. So I lost the sea and I lost Jenny. Joel has never seen the sea. When I'm at work, he has too much time alone. Once he told me his dream, his favorite dream. He'd like to pull up anchor and sail our house all the way to the sea. No, go away. Wait, wait, give me a scuff. Give it back. Give it back to him. Hell still. If I was a mum and had a son like you, I'd have run away as well. My mum's a figurehead, but I don't suppose you know what that is. What's a figurehead, miss? Is there anybody in the class that knows what a figurehead is? Oh, Joel knows. His mum's a figurehead. Where on earth did you get that from? A figurehead is a wooden carving attached to the bows of a ship. Not nowadays, but in the old days when they had sailing ships. No one can have a mum made of wood. Ha <laughs> Joel. Joel, look at me. You know a lot about all kinds of unusual things. But I must say, you sometimes get a bit carried away by your imagination. Figurehead, that's funny. I'm driving around at night, like I always do. I see a snow fox, or the old drunk stumbling around. Maybe Gertrude walking solitary in the night. But who's that in the shadows? It's 
Joel, he's walking along the street. Nothing unusual in that. Except it's one o'clock in the morning. Why was the dog here, all alone and cold? Where was it going? Why did it stop and sniff in all directions? A black elk hound, here one moment, gone the next. On the first night, Joel Gustafsson completed his reconnaissance mission to everyone's complete satisfaction. The adventure has begun. The dog will be tracked down. Good morning, Samuel. Morning. There were no evil intentions in his wife. She had an itch, that's all. He can't blame her for that. He should forgive her. I pray for him and his son and for her. Jesus forgives. When Jesus heard what had happened, he withdrew privately by boat to a solitary place. Hearing of this, the crowds followed him on foot from the towns. Joel! Joel Gustafsson! How dare you sleep through my lessons! Oh no, I wasn't asleep. <laughs> Don't sit there telling me barefaced lies. You were asleep. The whole class could see that. Leave the room at once. The lookout on the mizzen mast, Joel Staffson, fell out of the crow's nest. Exhaustion was the cause. He survived without serious injury. After resting for a couple of hours, he was ready to climb the mast once more. What are you lying there for? Did you think I hadn't seen you? Who are you? I moved here today. I didn't want to, but I was forced to. Where'd you come from? That doesn't matter. Shan't be staying here anyway. Those of us who live here don't come sit down by the river and start blubbering. I rub my face with my glove. I'm allergic to wool. That's why my eyes are red. That's my rock. Nobody else is allowed to sit on it. Only me. Do you have a title deed? What's that? If you own a rock, you have to have a title deed. A certificate of ownership with an official stamp. You have to have that. Would you like to look through my telescope? That's my rock. It's yours. 
I don't want it. Now, are you going to try the telescope or not? OK. What do you call the size Joel? Gestatum. But how do you na know my name's Joel? It's carved into the rock. It must be you if you say the rock belongs to you. It is. What about you? What's your name? Swallow. But I am a nobleman, so it's Von Swallow. Rolf Von Swallow. Eh? Nobody's got a name like that. I have. And why don't you go to school? And why have you moved here? My dad's the new district judge. I start school in the autumn. I get home taught. That's what they think anyway. I'll have run away by then. Can't live here. In one week, three days, seven hours and nine minutes from now, I'll have run away. Just in case you're interested. Why? Why are you going to run away just then? Because the train leaves for Orsa at the time. Dad will be away at sessions. Nobody will notice me carrying my pack. There's a lot I need to take with me. I could really do with a hand to carry all my stuff. Maybe you could do that. Of course I could. Thanks. Can I have my telescope now, please? I've thought about running away as well. Show me something exciting, if there is anything exciting to show around here. I've got a secret, but it's at night, only at night. Perhaps you'll be asleep then. I'll be there. Meet under the viaduct, by the bridge, at midnight, but I shan't wait long. What happens? It's not sure anything will happen but there's a secret society. I'll be there. Sarah's come back with me for a cup of coffee, Joel. Sarah, this is Joel. Hello. There isn't any coffee. What do you mean by that? We've run out. I didn't have time to go to the shops. There's enough for you tomorrow morning. Enough for her. Oh, it doesn't matter. So, you're Joel then. Haven't I seen you in the bar selling newspapers? It's a nice place you share. It's annoying that we don't have any coffee. Oh, it doesn't matter. How did school go today? Mm. You're a real misery, aren't you? You can invite me to coffee another time, Samuel. I'm going to my room. will disappear. Red Hat started to eat him up. I'll kill her. Sarah's leaving now. Come say goodbye. Bye-bye, Joe.
The next time you come in the bar, I'll make sure the customers buy all your newspapers. I want a bike. I'm the only one who doesn't have a bike. A bike! I beg your pardon. I want a bike. I don't want to be the only one who doesn't have a bike. When I have the money, you'll have a bike, Joe. Really? Why not? It was fun having a visitor. Usually it's just you and me sitting gawping at each other. Are you going to get married again? No, I haven't got around to thinking about that yet. But it does get a bit lonely sometimes. Tell me about my mum. Soon. But not just now. Not when I'm in such a good mood. Sarah, the lady that was just here. He had a boy, just like you once. But he died in a fire. Him and his dad. They lived a long way from here at the time. She moved here after that. It must be hard to be reminded of it all every time she sees someone like you. Did I scare you? I'm pretty good at creeping up on people. Who are you talking to? I heard you whispering. Myself? Could you hear me? Yes. Quick, hide. Someone's coming. Who is it? Who is it? He's a madman who never sleeps. He drives around in his lorry all night. He hasn't slept for 34 years. He'll die if he hasn't slept for as many nights as that. He's dead. That would mean he's a dead man driving around in that lorry. Maybe he is dead. Let's go. This is where an enemy lives. He's been excluded. He's called Otto, and he's a real bastard. Excluded from what? You'll find out soon enough. Come on. How old are you, by the way? Twelve. You as well? Nearly. Come on. Another enemy lives here. The lady in the red hat. She will be eliminated. Why? Who is she? She serves beer in the bar. She's broken into my flat. Why don't you go to the police? It's not that kind of breakup. Follow me.
You want too much for you? No problem. This is where I live. The whole house. Oh, just the top floor. Hmm. See the arch? Some of it high, isn't it? Yes. What about it? If you betray the secret society, you have to climb to the top of it and over it. With gloves, as you wish. It's like ice. Too much for you? I have no intention of evading my obligations. Now, what is the secret society? I can't tell you to remember. What must I do to be one? You must place your tongue on ice metal and count up to 50. And you must promise to crawl over the highest of the iron arches if you betray the secret society. I promise. Now what do we do? We look for the black dog. This is the logbook. And this is the code. T-S-F-T-D-T-H-F-A-S. 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 The search for the dog, the head of the star. That's what the letters stand for. T-S-F-T-D-T-H-F-A-S. The search for the dog, the headed for a star, began on March the 8th, 1956. Absolute secrecy was reserved. The weather was fine, clear sky, plus four degrees, colder towards evening. That's the first entry of the secret society, made yesterday. Well, the secret society's good, but we can do more than just look for a dog. But you're going to run away soon. I thought we could find the dog while you're still here. A secret society must create fear. We have to show that we're dangerous. How? I'll show you. Quick, hide. Somebody's coming. Do you know who it is? Yes, I know her. Everyone does. Why is she out in the middle of the night with her head bowed? She's always wandering around on her own. Why? She hasn't got a nose. She had an operation and they took it off. She tried to drown herself in the river and put snow chains around her neck to go to the bottom. But Happy Harry saved her just in time. Who's Happy Harry? The minister. She works for his church. What's she got if she hasn't got a nose? It's a hole. Most people, are, she wears handkerchief in it usually. Most people are afraid of her, except Happy Harry. I'm not afraid of her. Nor am I. You said you were going to show me something. I will. How to create fear. <laughs> ah! running up and down stairs. Has something happened? Oh uh, no, nothing at all.
All the crew have been lost now. The last one to be swept overboard was Abel Seaman, Samuel Gustafsson. His son fought for the last saving, but it was all in vain. The only one left on ship now is Joel Gustafsson. No other soul, only Joel Gustafsson. quick. Right, let's see. Nils Weiberg. Christian Johansson. Margarita Eriksson. Joel Gustafsson. Joel Gustafsson. Otto Land. I have some soup for you. I'm not hungry, thanks. Later then. What are you reading? I've no idea what books are called. I just read bits here and there, and if there's a bit I don't like, I change it. This book has an ending I don't like. So I'm writing in a new one, as I want it to be. Are you allowed to do that? There are all sorts of things you're not supposed to do, but I do them all the same. As long as I'm doing no harm to anyone. Besides, I'm mad. Are you? No doubt I was once. All thoughts I had caused me so much pain. But that's all changed now. I only think thoughts that I like. You said you were going to serve me soup. I need to know what's going to happen this afternoon and evening. You don't look very happy. You look as if you have a lot of thoughts in your head and you prefer not to be there. Is that right? Yes. Good morning, Samuel. What are you doing here at this time in the morning? This lake doesn't have a name on the map. The first time I came here, I was very mixed up. It was in the winter, just like now. And I stood on the ice. And I shouted out my name as loud as I possibly could. Simon! Simon! 
I shouted. I don't know why, it just happened. Then all four winds came rushing out of the forest, one from each point of the compass. The first wind was cold and whispered sorrow, sorrow in my ear. The next wind whined and growled fury, fury in my ear. The third wind was warm and whispered happiness, happiness in my ear. The fourth wind was both warm and cold, and it told me to choose which of the other winds I wanted. I turned my back on all of the other winds, and I let happiness stroke my cheek. All the sorrow I'd been feeling just melted away. You have to be on your own if the winds are to appear. All you have to do is shout your name. Joel? Joel! All okay? Yes. Maybe the four winds don't exist. Maybe not. But you feel differently to how you felt before, don't you? I'd better be going home now. You didn't have any soup. Maybe next time. Maybe. There's been an accident. Somebody was hit by a falling tree. We had to take him to hospital by horse. But it was too late. He's dead now. This morning he got out of bed and made coffee. He had no idea. What happens when you die? If only I knew. But I don't. The forest is no place to be. Why don't we move away from here? Why don't you become a sailor again? Next time, it's what your head a tree falls onto. What shall I do then? Move in with Miss Westman downstairs? Or go and live with Sarah? I've thought about that, in fact. What will happen to you if anything happens to me? I've thought about that. I'm not moving in with Sarah. I'd rather live with Simon Winston. Whatever for, isn't he mad? Not at all. I think he's very sensible. That's not on, but I've thought about it. I don't like Sarah. Why'd you keep on seeing that? Sarah's all right. She puts me in a good mood. She laughs her way through life, even though she's endured a lot of things bad enough to make her cry. Don't we laugh, then? Don't keep comparing all the time. Sometimes I miss her so badly. Do so miss her. Mum? Jenny? Of course I miss Jenny. But she left me. She ran away. Me, don't want to miss her. I don't want to miss somebody who doesn't miss me. How do you know that? She left me. 
She ran away from me and you and all the things that we were going to do. We were only going to stay here for a few years while you were little. I was a sailor. This was the only other job I could get at the time. We thought it was a good idea to stay here where neither of us had been before, only for a few years. And then I would sign up with some ship again, but she got up one day and left. Not a single word for all these years, not a <coughs> single word. I don't know if she's still alive or what she's doing. She had an itch. That's what Miss Westman thinks. Mrs Westman, what does she know? I don't want any food. You can make whatever you want for yourself. I know you can. I'm going out for a bit. Don't go to Sarah. Don't go to her. I'll go to whoever I want to go to. John, somebody threw a stone through Sarah's window. It wasn't you by any chance, was it? Was it? No, Dad. I haven't been throwing stones. Now I must be careful to hold his eye and not to look away, or he will know it was me. I just wondered. But it happened in the middle of the night, so it could have hardly been you. No, Dad. Come with me to Sarah's. She'll make you a bite to eat. Me? Why have I not? Let's go over there together. I've missed him. You're a nice boy. Your dad can be proud of you. Where were you last night? Uh, we were singing at the house of a woman. Let's go dog that barks. I couldn't get out without waking everyone. Let's go. Last night, I did what we've agreed to do. I poured varnish over her window boxes. Now it's your turn. You're going to cut down the plant shears climbing up her walls with those shears. We hadn't agreed anything. I don't want to pour varnish over her window boxes. And I'm not going to cut back any of her plants. Just as I thought. You're a coward. I'm not a coward. You don't dare. I do, but I don't want to. You said if you betray the secret society, you have to climb over the arch. Well, you betrayed it. You didn't show up last night. I waited, but you never appeared. In a secret society, you don't come up with a series of excuses. You do what you've agreed to do. There's the arch. I'm waiting. I couldn't come last night. That's all there is to it. It's the climbing plants or the bridge. But I told you I couldn't come. I need a pee. You could have a piss from the top of the bridge. I want to look for the dog. Ha! Fine. I'll do it. But not because I've betrayed the secret society. I'll wait here. You can wait wherever you like. What do you think you're doing? Come here. Come here. Who are you? I'm not going to hit you. Even though I'm very strong. I just want to know why you're doing this. One night you terrorise me in the street. The next morning I find that somebody has killed all the plants in the window. 
And now you're destroying my climbing plants. Why? Well, we want to create fear. You create sorrow. I want to go home now. Do you know why I did that? Just because you're deformed doesn't mean you're an idiot. If I'd have still have had a nose, I don't suppose I'd ever have learnt how to play it. Do you understand what I mean? What's your name? Jolgi Safton. Why did you do all this? I want to know. now, but come back later and tell me why you did it, once you understood why yourself. Don't promise me, promise yourself. Go on. Didn't expect that, that you'd get caught. I'm glad you'll see me running away. Before I run away, I'll make you climb over that arch. You got caught before you did what you promised to do. I'll climb over the arch. I'll climb over it now if you like. I'm not afraid. You wouldn't. You wouldn't dare. You'd slither back down again. We'll see about that. Go and stand in the middle. I climb onto the parapet, next to where the arch begins. I reach both arms out. I can just reach far out enough to cling onto the sides, hold tight, and ease upwards. Hand onto the eye. Cold penetrates the glass. I can't go any further up, and I can't come down. I'll fall, I'll die, or I'll freeze to the arch till spring comes. Come down, Joel, come down. Lie completely still. Don't move at all, Joel, don't move. Creep backwards, slowly. I'll hold on to you. He's my family and he's my son. He's alive and he's coming home with me. Thank you, sir. I don't know your name. My name is Simon Winstall. I just happen to be in the right place at the right time. No one came to any harm, I'm glad to say. The most important thing for you to understand is that you're not still stuck on top of that arch. I know that, Dad. I mean, I know that I'm here at home with you. Something that's over and done with. I know. I'm not saying you should forget it. You shouldn't forget it. 
I won't. But it's in the past now. Yes. You could have killed yourself, you know. I'd never have got over that. I'll never do what your mother did. I'll never abandon you. What are you always writing about in that notebook? It's a logbook. Read it to me. All right. During yesterday's violent storm, Captain Samuel Gustafsson climbed off a mast to rescue an engine lookout. Once again, Captain Samuel Gustafsson carried out yet another heroic deed. Where are you going? I'm not going to climb the arch again. I'll soon be back. You ought to stay home tonight. I'll soon be back. A penny for your thoughts? I'm thinking about a dog. What dog? A stray one. I want to see if he's OK. Are you like your mother? Have you got an itch too? No. I'm like my dad. I'm not going anywhere. You're a good boy. He needs you. You didn't complete the climb. And you didn't pee on my head. I can do it again. If I hadn't called for help, you'd still be up there. The secret society is mine, not yours. I'm not your servant, or steward, or slave. You're no longer a member of my secret society. You'd have to start one of your own, all right? If we're going to be friends, you'd have to act like a civilised human being. I don't know why I did it. That's all right. I know you won't do it again. Let's not speak of it anymore. Take your shoes off and I'll show you what I found in the attic of the church. I think whoever made the holes used to live there. Maybe a missionary, a long, long time ago. Samuel's been to all these places. I'm going there when I grow up. Samuel's my dad. Do you know what it smells like there? Cow seeds. They come from Zanzibar. How can you smell them? I can't, but I can remember the smell from when I was younger. And every time I see the pouch, it reminds me of the smell. You can smell things even if you don't have a nose. Anything is possible. Thank you. Bye. Where is she? Somewhere out there. I really don't know. Why did she leave us? Maybe she was too young. I'd like to think so. Maybe when she had you. When she had a child. Perhaps she was a child herself. And maybe now, when she's no longer a child. 
Maybe she regrets having run away. I think she doesn't dare to come back. Can't face looking her son in the eye. Perhaps I could go find her. It's up to you. If you want to meet her, you have the right to do so. What about you? She's different from me. It was so long ago. Now I have Sarah. No. I prefer her, just you and me. Sarah likes you. A lot. She's all right. She is. She's all right. Come on now. What do you reckon? Spring really on the way? Can we move somewhere we don't have snow all the time? We'll do that. We'll move to the sea one day. Yes, that's what I want. We can sell our house all the way down the river to the sea. But, but before we do, I've got a little present. Come with me. We don't need coats now. It's for you. Now you're 12. Happy birthday. Go on, open it. A pie. Search for the dog, the head of a star, ended on May the 25th, 1956. The captain and crew are confident the dog reached its destination. The weather was fine, clear sky, plus 18 degrees. Warmer weather in prospect. I'd like to say a very special thank you to all the crew. I, like they've just made, they've been so supportive, and I don't think we would have been able to pull it off without them. And the music has been amazing for Mr. Van Sark and Mr. Rook. And I'd like to have a very special thank you for Mr. Healy.
Thank you.